Welcome to Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon. I am your host, Captain Matt, and we're gonna today we're gonna talk about the truth about ownership and why you may not want to buy a boat. So <clears throat> obviously I've got this channel, Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon. I'm a huge boating fan. I love boating. One of the things that I created this channel for is to help folks that are considering buying a boat. As a, as a boat salesperson, I worked with a lot of first-time boat buyers and a lot of people that had some misconceptions about boat ownership. So I wanted to talk and just give you some of the, the truth, the reality of boat ownership that some people really don't think about. And it can cause them to make a bad decision to get involved in boating when it's really not the right activity for them. It's not the right hobby for a number of different reasons. So we're going to talk through that. But obviously, if you look at this picture of my girls and I, it's it's something I love. It's something they love. It's something my wife loves, my family, my brother and sister my parents, I've got cousins, uh, my in-laws ha have gotten into boating since I've joined the family. And, and it's something that is, is awesome for a lot of people. And, and I want to help make sure with this channel that if they do get involved in boating, they have a great experience. But I also, I will get emails from time to time from folks saying, thank you for sharing this information. We decided now's not the right time. Our boating's not right for us because of some of the information that you provided. And I thought I would just do a short video that would go through some of it. So the first thing is just the overall cost of boating. The new boats especially have, have just the cost has just gone through the roof on some of them. They keep getting bigger and bigger and more expensive. Now there's a, we're going to talk more about the cost because that can be a big thing that catches people off guard. It's one of the, the number one issues that people cite when they are surveyed about getting into boating is the, what they call unexpected costs. So I've got some video that go into the details, but we'll talk about the basics. So how do you, how do you lower your cost of investment to get into boating? Well, one is you can buy a used boat. You can buy something that's used that has had some depreciation already, and um, you're going to be able to get more for your money. And, and the reality is on used boats, there's a boat has a long, long lifetime of it if it's well taken care of. It's what a lot of the videos on my channel are about, how to make sure that you find those that are well taken care of and avoid the one that's aren't. Um, the new boats can be very expensive, and yet you have to take the depreciation, but some of the costs are less with the new boat. Uh, maintenance and the upkeep can be slightly less uh, because it's a new boat and uh, you won't have any breakdowns or repairs that aren't covered by warranty. On the flip side, a new boat is going to have what they call a shakedown period. There's, you know, the first five to 10 outings, it's very, very common and almost should be expected that there's going to be little things that, um, that break is the, just the right way to put it that, you know, a, a screw is going to come loose. Something wasn't attached properly in the, in the production process because they're very much handmade items, uh, handcrafted. And at times people have a bad day, uh, you know, in, in, in it's, it's not uncommon to have something that's not a hundred percent right. A good dealer will catch a lot of it. A good dealer will put that boat on the water and run it before they deliver it. Doesn't always happen, not always possible. And so what happens is you're responsible for identifying those issues within the warranty period, letting the dealer know the dealer talks to the manufacturer, gets approval and it's fixed. So it shouldn't be money out of your pocket, but you do need to find those issues and notify the dealer as soon as you're aware of them so they can get it marked if there's a time period that uh, that warranty is going to expire. On the used side, you just need to make sure that you're buying the right used boat that is going to be less likely to have major issues. Now, every boat's going to have some type of repair. Every boat's got some maintenance that's going to be required. So the other major expenses... Um, in my mind are storage being the number one most expensive, especially if you're going to be in a marina, um, a wet slip, 
keeping it on the water, a dry stack storage like you see in this picture right here, um, or even a, even a storage facility. Um, and if you can keep it in your driveway or have a building, that's, that's the best in my opinion, uh, and, and least expensive. Next is the maintenance. Maintenance requirements are going to be, um, you know, you got to do your oil changes. You got to do your gear lube and your impeller changes. And then as the boat gets older and older, you start having 300 hour services, 500 hour services, 600 hour services, 900 hour services, thousand hour services, and it keeps going on and those get more and more intensive and more and more likely to uncover uh, something, a repair that needs to be done to keep that boat in good working condition. And then the fuel. A fuel is a, another major one, depending on how you run your boat. Um, you know, if you're running offshore fishing, if you're doing a lot of water sports and tubing and surfing, um, those fuel bills can add up. Now, boat insurance is pretty expensive, but those are some things that you need to be aware of um, so that you don't get in a situation where um, financially you're in a tight spot and the boating just isn't fun. It's more of an obligation. Uh, it's more of a, a nuisance. Next is cleaning. To keep your boat in good condition, you need to clean it consistently. That means every time out, at the beginning of the season, at the end of the season, um, it needs to be washed. It needs to be waxed once a year and, and buffed out, maybe even compounded, depending on where you are. Uh, the interior needs to be wiped out and cleaned consistently to keep that mold and mildew at bay. Um, and, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's specialty materials. The fiberglass is very easily scratched. So you've got to use the right materials. The upholstery is subjected to sun and sunscreen and, uh, you know, people on it and gear. So you really have to protect it and, and keep, keep it um, nice and clean so that the boat will last and you can get your money out of it when you go to sell it. Something that a lot of people don't think about when they buy a boat is they think of all the fun in the sun. But they don't think about the scrubbing uh, and the spraying and the rinsing and the waxing. Now, the good thing is, or bad thing, depending on how you look at it, is you can either spend time or money. So if you've got the time and the, the inclination and the ability, you can clean it and do the maintenance and do all of that yourself. And it really can be very inexpensive, but it takes a lot of time. On the money side, hey, I just I've got the money. The bank account's not a big deal. I'm gonna pay somebody to do it. And now you just need to find somebody that is good and capable and knowledgeable uh, and reliable uh, to do the work. So uh, you know, have your own detailer, have your own technician and mechanic that can come and do the work. But there's still gonna be a component of each. There's Hey, if somebody's going to be doing the work, well, maybe you have to get the boat to them. Uh, you've got to get the boat to the boat launch and, and drop it in. Uh, you got to drive to the marina. There's always going to be some sort of a time component that you need to be aware of uh, and make sure it fits into your lifestyle. And there's always going to be a certain financial component that you have to be aware of and have budgeted in and be ready and then also have some money set aside for those unexpected things because I can't tell you exactly what they'll be but I can tell you you'll have some unexpected come expenses come up um and you need to be ready to make sure that um you know that you can enjoy your time and like I said it doesn't become a financial burden and I don't have the money to fix it or take care of it and now the boat sits for a year or two or three and now that's one of the worst things that can happen and now your boat has lost a ton of value uh because it's not in uh, proper working order now next it, it's responsibility Listen, as the boat owner, once you step on that boat and you're taking other people out, or even if you're just by yourself, you're responsible. You're responsible for their safety. You're responsible for knowing the rules of the road. I've got a great video on this that uh, that you can check out on the channel, uh, Rules of Boating. Uh, you need to know how to do certain things. You've got to have skills, how to trailer, how to dock, how to maneuver your boat, how to pull water sports. If you're fishing, you've got to have those skills. So there is a, a lot of responsibility as the boat owner and the boat captain. 
And listen, if an emergency comes up, you know, most areas, you're not going to have the Coast Guard there right away. Um, it's you're going to be the one, one responsible for taking care of everybody if something does happen. Um, you know, for, you know, you hit a, hit a underwater obstruction, you're going to be the one that has to take charge and make sure everybody on that boat is safe because it is part of the requirements that you're responsible as the captain of that boat, uh, for the safety of everybody on the vessel. And that encompasses a lot of different things that encompasses, uh, letting everybody know, the rules on your boat, what you expect, what you don't expect, how, if they've never been on a boat before, how to handle themselves on a boat drinking wise, when the boat's underway, um, in, this is the video I was talking about boating rules in 11 minutes in a, a short period of time, I, I give you what you need to know, but there's also some, um, boat handling. There is, how do you actually operate the boat? If you've never been on a boat, if you're a first time boater, um, you need to, to find out the details of how to operate your boat safely. So those are all the things that you need to consider if you're, if you're on the boat and you are going to be buying a boat, um, you know, think about all those things. Think about your time. Think about your budget. Think about your skill and your personality and your friends. Um, think about if you have the desire to learn how to operate that boat safely and effectively. This best boat captain on the water training is one that um, is going to help you with the skills part of boating. Uh, but for some people, the best thing to do is to not buy a boat. And I'd rather you know that now than buy a boat and have to sell it in a short period of time and maybe come out on the wrong end financially and just the headaches and the hassle of it all. So if you are thinking about buying a boat, go ahead and go through all of the videos. There's over 200 videos on the channel. Check them out. Subscribe. If you're not, if this said, hey, you know, maybe boating isn't right for me, you may want to go to like a boat setter or a get, getmyboat.com, which are boat rental agencies, where you can go and you can find the type of boat that you may want to consider and just try it out for a day uh, for a couple hundred bucks. And that might be the best way to really test the waters if you're on the fence. And if it's a no, hey, there's plenty of other fun things to do, but hopefully this video saved you some time and hassle. Uh, but if you are looking at going, check out the um, going deeper into boating, check out the rest of the channel. Thanks a lot. And remember, life truly is better on a boat if it's right for you. Take care, everybody.